Verona, October Carlo, De Bono Emilio, Chano Galeazzo, Giannitti Tullio, Gotardi Luciano, you allow them to arrest him? I thought you came here to see me. Instead, you're here for your husband. Of course I came for Galeazzo. I asked for a talk in Verona, but they turned it down. You have to do something, Papa. They won't let me see my husband. And what should I do? Prison rules? They're created by the director, Ada. Stop the tough act with me. You have to get him out of there. They put him in isolation. He can't see anyone, only a priest. Who gave these orders? You? The isolation is just a security measure. Some fanatic could try and kill him. Then it's true that you want to put him on trial. Papa, he's my husband. 
The father of my children. Of your grandchildren. Papa, we always cared about each other. I always was your favorite daughter. I've been close to you, always. Even more than Galeazzo. Why don't you want to help me out in such a difficult moment? I can't do anything about it, Edda. There are rules. There are six defendants in Verona, and I can't favor anyone. Of course. Because he voted against you. He's just a traitor to you. Do you want to make him pay? Do you want them to sentence him? The, he was rash, you have to admit. In life, everyone is responsible for their own actions. Instead of trying to save himself, using his own wife. Galeazzo didn't ask for anything! I'm here because I know he's innocent! You're destroying my family. Do you know what my curse is? That I'm your daughter. Are you going crazy? You are crazy! The war is lost! You know it very well! I said so to Hitler, and I'm repeating it to you. I also wanted to go to war. But now it's all over. What sense does it make to condemn Galeazzo? Enough now, Edna. Stop it. Go. Show me you're still the omnipotent father that I always believed in. Free Galeazzo. Or forget that I'm your daughter. Forget me. And never in front of anyone. Not even in front of you, Papa? Not even when you're alone. Courage, take it. Take it and move it. But it's disgusting. Do as I tell you. I'm afraid. Afraid? You must never even know what fear is. Remember that. Good girl, Edda. You see? A Mussolini must never be afraid and must never cry. Papa. Is it true what Mama says? That you wanted a son? What? Of course not. Don't pay any attention to her. That's all nonsense. Sandokan! Come over here, I have to talk to you. I'll be right back. What is it? Come. Listen. Do you know that Mama is going to give birth to a little brother in her room right now? Are you happy? No! I was enough! It's not true that my father said. What are you 
Italian press. Real disaster. We didn't even get one seat. All right, all right, all right. We asked votes for fascism and we lost. It means that in order to gain power, the time has come to change ways. Good, Bobo. You're right. We're too few. We need to grow, conquer the middle class, and start talks with the ones who really count. But without being afraid of using ways that are convincing, some heavy blows to the head can help clear things up. Strachi is right. We have to aim higher. We need stronger action. We can't sit and wait for Italy to be ruined. We hope for much more in the trenches. Papa! I knew you were alive. Edda, what's going on? I saw some men carrying a casket with your name on it. You need to get used to certain things, Edda. One day we're at the top of the world, and the next we're at the bottom of the abyss. This is our inevitable fate. We are a people who don't know mediocrity. But why were they upset with you? Yeah, because once I was one of them. But I'll never give in. You must never give in. Today, out there on the streets, there are people who follow a red flag. Aside from these people, there are many, many, many more that don't know where to go. And all of these people want a leader who puts things in place. Papa, I... I knew I shouldn't be afraid. But I thought you were... <laughs> You're a brave little girl. I'll tell you something else. You are braver than many men. Milan, October 1922. The defeat of three years ago was forgotten. Well done. The march on Rome was enough to dismiss the government of that fact. His Majesty the King, wishing to offer you the job of forming a new cabinet, invites you to come to Rome as soon as possible. The time, 12.55 on the 29th of October, 1922. If it's a rush, I can take care of our suitcase. There's no hurry. Papa's going to Rome alone. I'm counting on you to pay attention to your mother. Yes, that's all we need. You're a traitor! Don't ever say that, Edda. We'll all see each other again soon. I won't cry. I won't cry. I'd rather kill myself. January 3rd, 1925. What you've done to yourself. Aren't you ashamed of your age? Some boys said that Papa will kill the deputies and go against him. And that he killed someone named Mattiotti. Pay no attention. If you start arguing with everyone who's against your father, you'll be in trouble, huh? And then that guy, Mattiotti, he's an opponent, a socialist. Because I was compromising it. That it was dead. But it's Papa! Why didn't you tell me before? What is he saying? Where is he speaking from? From Parliament. I think this is the time they'll be sending him back home. Then you'll be happy. the Italian people that I assume I alone the political, moral, and historical responsibility of everything that happened. If more or less distorted phrases are enough to hang a man, bring out the rope. Bring out the post. If fascism was nothing more than castor oil and a club, instead of a superb passion of the best of Italian youth, the blame is mine. If fascism was a criminal association, I am the head of this criminal Why association. Why are you shaking your head? Because I'm, I'm sure sorry. That in but the from now on, your father is more than your father. He's the Duce of Italy. Over. What does that mean? I said you're not going out if you don't tell me who wins. I'm not telling you anything and I'll do whatever I want. 
We'll see about that. I'll tell your father how you're behaving and how you treat me. Then tell him, as though the Duce has time to deal with matters of his family. I said you're not going out. But yes, I'm telling you. But I already... Enough now, stop it! But I already told you I don't know. I don't know who she goes out with. I don't know where she goes, what she does. Now she even spends the night out. Yes, yes. Oh, yesterday she came back at dawn. And she smokes. Yes, she smokes. No, you have to get involved because you're her father and I can't... Hello? Benito, are you there? Now? Now she's in her room. I told her she's not allowed to go out all day. I swear, this is the first time that I've fallen around a woman in slippers. And I can't even catch her. The world's changing and quickly, too. Right, crazy shoes. Hey, look at your rod. Oh, see if you can really catch me. Come on. Uh, here we go again. <laughs> Come on. Open up. Mama! Your father wants to talk to you. We're going to Rome. I don't want to hear your mother complaining about you all the time, nor do I want to keep worrying about your behavior. Improper for a girl. That's enough, Edda. You know exactly what I mean. No. I still don't understand what I'm doing wrong. What is this story with that... Dino Mondolfi, huh? You're keeping him hidden? Well, I don't think he's so hidden. You're perfectly aware of him. Are you having me followed now? Don't you realize that things have changed? Now you are the daughter of the Duce. I don't care at all that I'm the daughter of the Duce. I want to be a normal person and not have your police at my heels. But you aren't just anybody, Edda. You can't behave anymore like a rebellious child. You have to decide to grow up and be quick about it. You won't make me do what you want, Papa. Go put your things together right away. We have to leave again for Milan. Do you see how she is? Without that cigarette. You can tell the Italians what to do, but not me. Yes, yes, Edda, go away. It's better. Then your mother and I can talk in peace. We have to find her a husband. But... Uh, it has to be somebody of a certain level. Yes, yes. But above all that, he'll know how to hold her back. Come on, eat still. Eat. You too. Since you're worrying so much about my future, I'm letting you know that I've already found a husband. Who is it? You already know, Papa. Dino Mondolfi. A Jew? Yes. Of course, I already know there will be some problems with him. His family doesn't want him to marry someone who isn't Jewish. But it doesn't matter. We'll get married anyway. All right. Very well. Do as you wish. But it's a real shame just now that I had decided to have the whole family come live with me. I want you all to come to Rome, everyone. Yes, your mother, you, your brothers. <sighs> to live with you in Rome? Well, it's time. We've been separated too long. 
I need everyone. And I need you, Edda. Rome, February 1929. success. Only he could make the church and the state agree. The king and the pope. I'll greet him only when he's in better company, excuse me. Edda, you're here? I thought you were with your father. No, you've got to be joking. The Sarpati woman is with him. Now he brings his lover out with him in public. Go on, train. No, thanks. Excuse me. I've already spoken with the Duce. What are you waiting for? There's no hurry, Alessandro. The time will come. Now I want to have a good time. Good for you. Poor Gally. You never have fun. <laughs> I do what I can. But I haven't introduced you yet. Anna Maria Alessandro Pavoli. Anna Maria just finished a film with Carmine Colon. It's a pleasure to meet an actress of such talent. Now then, Grandy, 
How much did we concede to the Vatican with the pact? One billion lira. Not bad, considering these times of crisis. Huh, not even one hundredth of the wealth confiscated in 1870. <laughs> Salute. To make up for it, the Church obtained supremacy of the Vatican State, and above all, the right of association for the Catholics. With the risk that the Italian Catholic Federation becomes a school for officers and politicians with different ideas from ours. passionate about sports, and I can assure you she won't give it up. <laughs> You'll need to be aware of it. Of course, of course. <laughs> Edda. Yes? Do you think this was smart? Anyway, I won't be seeing him again. Forget it. Stop with the stories. You have to get married, Edda. The Marquis is perfect for you. He's rich, noble, and kind. He's annoying and pedantic. Enough now. The Morelli family's excellent, and they come from our area, too. What would you call me instead? I wouldn't know. Maybe because you're in the middle of so many hens. Gallo. <laughs> Why don't you like it? I think you should know my best side. The one that's hidden. Can we be in formal count? Isn't it much better? You're with me here this evening because I'm the daughter of the Duce. <laughs> but when I started courting you, I didn't even know who you were. Coupe de Forde. I am engaged. Make a terrible mother. 
Oh, Leda, your cynicism is really funny. Isn't that so, Mama? I'm young. I want to have fun to play sports, to travel. You certainly won't miss having fun with Pier Francesco. You have no idea how much I'll miss the laughs with my son once he gets married. Oh, Mama. I would never want to cause you so much pain. For my son's happiness, I would do anything at all. Well, then. If it's like that, I think it's time to be more clear with my father. Have you already spoken with him about my dowry? You know, my father really appreciates people who are solid. I'll do it as soon as possible. What? Instead of talking to me about Edda's happiness, you talk about a dowry? But do Certainly I... not. A nightgown and a pair of slippers. There's my wife's dowry. Edda will have nothing more. <laughs> He's an idiot. The engagement is off. I'm telling you, that one, she'll never get married. She'll make them all run away, one at a time, legs raised, even if the Emperor were to come in person. I, instead, am afraid that Edda will lose her head over the first scoundrel that comes along. That's why we need to choose well, Raquel. Mm. Well, I didn't do it, eh? You know, I was informed that she met a person, a certain Galeazzo Ciano, a uh, young man, diplomat, the son of Costanzo Ciano, a convinced fascist, I know him, faithful man. He was elected count for his great military merits. In short, a good family, as you know. I found out that he has been around some, and it seems that it doesn't mind him. If she likes him, we surely won't like him. Now, don't you start into Raquel, eh? I've decided to go and speak to Galeazzo's father, without Edda's knowledge, naturally. Uh, but he's not where we come from. In me, c'era come una pazzia a quel tempo. Una amarezza, un invidia. Per chi non doveva patire quello che soffriamo noi. Dopo la morte del nostro bambino, innocente. Io mi sono sentita sola, inconsolabile. Non riuscivo a trovare una ragione, ero disperata. Avevo bisogno di qualcuno, di un sostegno. Avevo bisogno di te. Ma tu non c'eri, ricordi. Il dolore ti aveva fatto chiudere in te stesso. E io per te non esistevo più. E così ho incontrato lui. Con te ho tradito anche me stessa. Una donna senza onore e senza cuore, senza religione. Do you want to marry me? Why not? Do you think your parents would like me? you a lot and my mother doesn't, then that means you're the perfect man for me. Duce, uh, <clears throat> Duce, uh, you know that uh, two weeks ago I met uh, your daughter and, and I had the highest privilege of uh, meeting her again. Well, Duce, I came uh, to tell you, Edda agrees that, that we, Edda and me, uh, well, they're, uh, du um, Duce, I've come to ask for your, for your, daughter's hand in marriage.
Raquel. Raquel. The young man here has come to ask for our daughter's hand. Personally, I... I have no objections. She knows my daughter doesn't even know how to make the bed. She doesn't know how to do anything. It's as though the house doesn't exist for her. She can't even boil an egg. As for personality, it's best not to talk about it. I'm her mother. I just want to alert you, Cal. Don't worry about it, Lady Rochelle. I will survive. you this this thing I I had it brought from India just for you Papa it's beautiful thank you are you sure about what you're doing mm. I'm sure that I love him hmm. Fine. that's what I wanted to hear yeah mm. Our children are only going as far as Camp Ray. Yes, but right after they are leaving for China, I hope that my Galeazzo would stay with us a bit longer. You know how it is. Instead, he has to go back to Shanghai, and the Duce gave his permission, and now he'll leave. Listen, listen. The young newlyweds, their polite liveliness, are the symbol of a new youth born for the sun and integrity. Not bad, don't you think? Yeah. Born for the sun. Do you think our baggage already made it to Capri? Of course, since yesterday at least. Come on, stop. I'll drive. There's a car following us. What? 
Edda. How far do you intend to stay behind us, Papa? You're only eating dust by doing this. Oh, it's just that I haven't been able to say goodbye enough. <laughs> Sandra Ken got married, Papa. The man in that car is her husband. Yes, you're right. Maybe it's better if you spend your honeymoon alone. Go then. Be happy. Madame Countess, Cauciano, the personnel of our hotel wish you a pleasant stay. Thank you. Welcome to Cap. Thank you, sweet. Here. Thank you. In Shanghai, You'll have a great time, you'll see. It's an extraordinary city, cosmopolitan. Really, in the center of a country uh, that's I'd like something else, another bit of cake. That's the third piece, Edda. Come on, leave it alone. You can see it a mile away that you don't want anymore. I'm going to explode. Listen, can I please know why your head is someplace else since we got here? Didn't you see them? Didn't you see how they all look at me? Because you're the most famous bride in Europe. And the most beautiful, too. I was embarrassed. If the personnel was staring at me as if... as if they were all thinking the same thing. What thing? You know, that you and me... Edda! Edda. Come on, I know where you are. Come out. Well, you don't want to stay here all night long. Leave me alone. I'm not letting you in. And, uh... Go away or I'll throw myself off the Ferenglioli and I'm not joking. Yes, good. Throw yourself off. It's just that I don't know how you'll get to the Ferenglioli. Darling, I'm not at all thinking about what could happen between us tonight. I want to embrace you, be with you, talk to you, look at you all night long, even the entire honeymoon if you want. But you have to trust me. I beg you. I made you believe I was different. I'm a mad pony, as Father says. I really don't know what it means to be a woman. You are a unique woman, Etta. And it's for this very reason that I love you. And then instead, I'm afraid that you don't love me. Ah, yes, because, because you're so distrustful. You don't trust anyone. Do you want to trust me? Hmm? Edda. Trust me. Shanghai, Italian Consulate, 1931. Will you be staying long in Shanghai, Cauciano? Well, we'll see. Please excuse me. Good luck, then. You are beautiful. Thank you. The most famous newlyweds in the world and the most in love of all, Shanghai. What does that mean? That if one day the people shall regret, it can only be upset with itself. I know we're the center of attention, but the Duce is victorious. Everyone's done their part. 
All the Italians are doing their part. What I'm trying to say, if the day comes that the people change their minds, I can't guarantee we wouldn't do the same. You're an idiot. How dare you? And you want satisfaction right away. How can he find a successor, a man like Mussolini? We'll see about this, however succession to my father isn't too near. And now excuse me, but I would like to sit down. Edna, I'll come with you. Thank you, darling, but there's no need. Good evening. I'll take a hand in the next game, if you allow me yes, to. Yes, of course, madam. May I, Madam Countess? Yes, thank no you. No problem. Please. Thank you. Well, shall we play another hand? <laughs> thank you. Good evening. talk about Mussolini in the world. But here in Shanghai, we speak a lot about you too. <laughs> Shanghai always reserved a very warm welcome for me. So then, another hand? No, not me, thanks. You play. Your husband. Galea. Do you remember it? Well, I think you've rested enough. <laughs> if you will excuse me. You find any excuse to keep me from playing cards, don't you? No, I just wanted to squeeze you one more time before going. Going where? I wanted to eat home this evening. The two of us alone. Because I have an appointment at the consulate and I'll be very late. It's nothing. I'll wait for you anyway. Would you prefer to eat Italian or Chinese? Chinese is better. At least I'll be sure you didn't cook it. Oh. Don't kid yourself. I learned to cook Chinese food too. I order you not to lose too much money. I'll try. What are you still doing up? You are a liar. And a pig, too. What are you saying? I, I, I didn't do anything. Ah, oh, the Shanghai beauty refused you? Excuse me, Edda, but I don't understand. Enough of these lies! I saw you leave with her! Edda, nothing happened. Nothing of importance. I trusted you! You asked for my trust and you betrayed it! Edda, but our love is intact. These are certainly not things which can destroy it. I... Edda, 
I'm not perfect. You have to understand that men are fragile. There you have it. So this means I have to accept everything? I have to be strong for the both of us? Edda. Don't touch me! Don't come near me! Don't come near me! Oh my god. The baby. Fabrizio. <laughs> Chichano. Papa's love, huh? It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Edda, forgive me. Give me your trust, I beg you. I can't live without it. I swear it will never happen again. Chichino. We have to go back to Rome, Edda. China's heading for war with Japan. It's a very dangerous situation, and we'll be forced to close our consulate, too. Edda. Edda. Edda, you'll see. We'll go back to Rome and begin a new life for ourselves with Fabrizio. The grandparents will be so happy, eh? Chichino. Rome, 1933. Count? Madam Countess? You won't recognize Rome any longer. Did you see how many things the Duce did over these years? It's becoming a true world capital. Yes, yes. Excuse me. What is it that's wrong? That I don't know what I'll do. On the other hand, I always and only led the life of a diplomat. We've just gotten off the boat and already you're discouraged. You were always a man of a thousand resources, Galeazzo. That no one has yet to recognize and valued even less. That's not true. <sighs> For example, my father holds you in very high esteem. Edda, he doesn't even know me. Until today, he's only seen me twice. The day I asked for your hand, and when we got married. The police confiscated it here and there in the Roman countryside. The peasant's office for fighting against fascism. But the stencils were passed through the copying machine in the offices of the Italian Alpine Club. But how isn't the club completely ours? In fact, it, it's a cover. Excellent. But we know who it was. A student of the group who was given the keys of the branch to organize a summer camping trip. I'm not disturbing you, Papa? Ah, oh, Edda. Uh... Chief, if you'll please excuse us. <laughs> ah. You look radiant, simply beautiful. Luckily, China didn't ruin you. You certainly played a good trick on me by making me a grandpa. I certainly felt so old. When you see Chichino, you will go crazy. He's beautiful. Why didn't you bring him to me? I just thought it was better off for him to stay at home with the nannies and with Galeazzo. Now he stays at home with the baby? Until he has something better to do. Yes, of course, Galeazzo is still young, but he already has a lot of experience. He's very smart, well prepared. And then he's well traveled. He's also an ambitious man. And he can't sit still with his hands in his lap. Did you come here to plead your husband's cause? No, no, Galeazzo doesn't know anything, and he mustn't know anything. Whatever it is you decide to do for him. Fine. An incendiary attack destroyed the seat of the German parliament. For Chancellor Hitler, this is the first sign of an imminent subversive action by the communists. He has therefore given the go-ahead for a vast operation of arrests against exponents of the This left. attack comes at the right and time for Hitler. The Communist Party. So now he can attract the all the powers that surround him. Chancellor Hitler also immediately issued an This is a lucky break given that it's one month since his nomination. For everyone's welfare, inevitable restrictions of the right to freely express one's He's trying to intimidate you, Duce, but he's not able to. The right to and it's dangerous because he wants 
wants to take Austria for himself. Nazi Austria would be a threat for the Alto Adige region after going to war to take it back. I won't let him. Austrian Chancellor Dolphus is our friend. You, Duce, are in the best position to arbitrate the European situation at this time. Yes, of course. Well said, Galeazzo. You're right. We have to, although, consolidate the regime even more so. We need a stronger propaganda, more incisive. I need a new officer for my press office. I want young collaborators. I like youngsters, above all, when they are alert, prepared, modern. And ambitious, too. The job I'm about to give you, Galeazzo, is... is very delicate. Rise to the occasion. <laughs> but, Duce, it's the most important job that I could ever receive, and it's coming from the person that I admire most in the world. You didn't marry me just because I'm the Duce's daughter, right? Uh, yes. What silly things you're saying. Bravo! Are you pleased? They are all talking about you and nothing else. I wanted to congratulate you in person. Thank you. See, word gets around, huh? You are the most envied man right now. Head of the press office for the Duce. Lucky break. <laughs> but you know everything. I could have guessed much more than what people think. <laughs> well, yes, you are already close to the Duce. I hope this new position won't take you away from any of your old friends. <laughs> Not from you, that's for sure. Wait, wait. <laughs> Thank you. Get uh, okay. close your eyes. <laughs> Surprise? Surprise. Come, come, go up. Caliazzo, <laughs> stop it. Come, come, come. Let me see. Look. Voila. Here is the spot. <laughs> Here it is, eh? That will be my studio. Oh, it's magnificent. Above the bedrooms? Hmm? <laughs> Dining room? Living room? I can't believe it. Isn't it beautiful? It's perfect! Just perfect for all four of us! Four? Who's the fourth? There's another little Luciano on the way. Edda. 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 <laughs> my love. But this is quite a surprise, eh? You two are nothing less. I'm the happiest man in the world. I have an extraordinary wife. A wonderful family. Eh? And a great career. You see, my father really does appreciate you. He and I will do great things. I don't doubt it. Yes, my father is the most marvelous man in the world. Don't tell me you're jealous. Thank you for coming. This house is beautiful. 
Yes, we are good friends. We've known each other for years. I believe you. You're always bothering the pretty one. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I'm stealing him away. Please. If you'll excuse me. Edda. You haven't seen no. him yet, right? Edda. Alessandro Povolino. One of my most dearest friends. A Tuscan from Florence, not from Leghorn, unfortunately, in this life, no one's perfect. <laughs> oh, he's a writer, too. Did you know? Uh, oh. Yes, but only one of us really knows how to write. Of course I do. Naturally. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but these things are too dramatic for my taste. Well, I'd better go find my date. However, I spoke about it with the Duce, and he agrees. It will really Balma, be a memorable what do you say? project. Huh? There is talk for a big project Rome, for Italy. Chicago, New York, Rome. We will celebrate the 10th anniversary of the fascist revolution with a large crossing by air. It's his favorite topic. A fleet of 24 Savoia Marchetti hydroplanes will leave together from Chicago. Nora! Flying over Lake Michigan. Darling, are you getting bored? No, 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 no. I'm waiting for a friend. I... Yes, while the world was in crisis. Meanwhile, the Italian economy was growing, thanks to fascism. Not to speak of the Paludi Pontine and some public works. Well, yes, Mussolini will have also made the trains run on time. But the Italian people are paying for it with the loss of freedom. Senator Adolfi, Italians don't know what to do with freedom. They much prefer not having to import grain from abroad. It's true. A country in arrear such as ours needed to feel the whip of the dictatorship. That's what you say. Speak for yourself, not for the Italians. You probably soured, given that you are no longer senator. But you know very well that after years of decadence, Italy is finally straightened out by a man of iron will who intends to restore the glory and the well-being of ancient Rome. Yes, but the other dictatorships are born in Europe using fascism as an example. The war destroyed European order, and it's easy to take advantage of the discontent of the masses. But you're forgetting that Churchill and Roosevelt define Mussolini as the greatest living statesman, and that the Cardinal of Boston considers him a genius, a genius that God gave to Italy. For each one who speaks well about it, there are 100 who think badly. Edda, may I introduce the Marquis Emilio Pucci of Barcento? Welcome, Emilio. Very pleased to meet you. I've been wanting to meet you for some time. Laura always talks about you. And to me about you. Can I offer you something to drink? Yes, certainly. Your house is splendid. Thank you. If you like, I'll be happy to show you around. I put my entire soul into it. You have a beautiful soul, then. <laughs> This is my husband's studio. The only room where I didn't open my mouth. I'm sorry, Anna. I'm sorry. Anna. What happened? My husband's lover is also part of the furniture. Which one? You mean to tell me there's more than one? And this is how you tell me? I'm sorry. Excuse me. But that's how Galeazzo is. I thought you knew and that you didn't care about it. Deep down, you love each other. Deep down, there's nothing. Yeah, party's over already? It is for me. Papa, Mama tells me that you don't eat anything, but you always have a stomach ache. Listen, I came to give you two pieces of news. One is good and the other is bad. Fine. Tell me then. First, the good news. I'm pregnant again. That's not good. It's excellent. Now, what's the bad news? I want to leave Galeazzo. Why? Is he mistreating you? Isn't he feeding you? He cheats on me. So bad about that. I can't stand it, Papa. It hurts too much. You mustn't, Deda. Infidelity is in the nature of the male. You should know it by now. Go home and forget about it. Worry instead over your next son, understand? Go now. I have things to do.
It's open. Edda, I'm deeply upset. I beg you to forgive me. I'm fed up with your excuses. I've already heard them a thousand times, but it's always the same story. I bought a house in Capri, where I'll go with my friends, with or without you. I think the distance can only do us some good. You know, I've learned something. I'll never be jealous of you again. Ah, uh, and <sighs> if you really can't resist, at least choose some lovers that I think are nice. My daughter is complaining about your cheating. Duce. I read your report on the reorganization of the press service based on the German model. It's good. Better still, excellent. I've decided to create a real undersecretarial position for press and propaganda, and you will be in charge. I need people I can trust. Duce. Yes. Italy has a right to expand. Italy absolutely must have its piece of Africa like France and England do. It must become an empire. And therefore the Italians and the entire world must understand that this step is inevitable. Fine. Excellency. Oh yes. Now you are part of the government. But don't think that this means I approve of your cheating. You have to be much more discreet. Edda must not come complaining about you ever again. Understood? New York Beach. Like ancient navigators, the Atlantics completed the difficult flight that from Rome first took them to Chicago to reach New York in the end. General Italo Balboletto, the quadrumphant of the revolution. New York also gave an extraordinary welcome to Balbo and his pilots. A festive crowd, one and a half million admiring people who turned Darwin's centurion. The wings of Mussolini, corianders and stringed up stars, and paid them homage with the waving of Italian flags. The mayor of New York honored the flyers by symbolically giving them the key. Magnificent to the city. achievement, Duce. Even a Sioux Indian. You chief must be proud of Balbo. You know what Danuccio said about him? Italo is the tomorrow of us all. And calling him Chief Flying Eagle. The biggest recognition, however, was when the Olympics returned to Rome and the Duce awarded General Balbo with the honor of the baton of Marshal of the Air. An honor without precedent. Balbo should be careful. He's pushed himself too far. I think this is his swan song. The valor of our people, and above all, the valor of our leader. The Duce needs to have trusted people next to him at this time, and that follow him. He calls me every morning at six. I am by now the first person that he wants to talk with. Maybe he calls you because he wants to hear the rooster crow. Here is the music of heaven with pipes of fluted pride. Edda, please don't smoke. Mm -hmm. So much attention, Marazzo. You show everyone that you are good and thoughtful husband. 
The ample music of Balbo and of the Flyers Gianna, over the Atlantic. did you know about Bumble. Senator Rodolfi? He was arrested. It seems he held anti-fascist discussions at your house. In none other than Chiano's house. And the secret police function well. It's everywhere. I can assure you that Roosevelt has much sympathy for you and for your socialist policies. I don't like the Americans. I find them cynical and materialistic. Benito America is a great power, and we have to take it into account. Duce. What is it? Come in. Duce, excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt, but... Duce, this time it's a girl. Ed is fine. Finally, some good news. Congratulations. Give my regards to Edda. Thank you, Italo. Uh, excuse me. I wanted to show you the draft of the poster we wanted to create for the referendum. The idea is to make it so large that it covers the entire side of a building. Good, Galeazzo. I think we understand each other well, you and me. In conclusion, Italo, I am naming you the governor of Libya. You are taking the Department of Aeronautics from me and shipping me to the desert? Congratulations, Italo. For what? For the promotion or for the exile? I bend to your ineffable wish, my great boss. Very nice. Italo. A piece of advice. Never trust him completely. Benito can't stand rivals, and he was never faithful to any friendship, to any pact, to any ideal. But history imposes changes upon us. We can't remain the same, always. Immobility is for the dead. Well done. You know it by heart. But don't exaggerate by imitating him. One risks ridicule when not at the same level. This is to be seen. You will never have his place. You will never be his successor, and the earlier you realize this, the better. The Mussolini-Hitler meeting in Venice. German Chancellor Hitler wanted to pay a visit to our Duce Benito Mussolini. The meetings were held in the Royal Villa of Straw along the Brenta, and then they continued on to Venice. He's a dangerous man, but after having met him, I also think he's crazy. He never stopped talking, not even for a second. And what did he say about Austria? That he has no intention of annexing it. At least for the moment, it's of no interest. But you will see that he will want the Austrian Chancellor Dolphus to step down. Consequently, there will be new elections. And with the elections, the Nazis will also rise in the Austrian government, right? That's why he wants them. Now then, Edda, how are things with Galeazzo? <laughs> how should they be going? We haven't spoken in months. Hmm. You know, I think about you a lot. Don't think that I don't. I'm your father, and I need to have you closer. Well, you're a true Mussolini, no? <laughs> I'm telling you something. I decided that soon Italy will have Ethiopia. It's settled now. Oh. I will have it with or without the consent of the League of Nations. Sure, I know it's a challenge to the British Empire. But what does our ambassador say? I've had enough of Grandi. All he does is send me messages that are too Anglophile, defeatist. No, no, I, I need someone that can tell the English unofficially there that it has been decided that we will go to Ethiopia and make it our empire at whatever cost. Well, but they're not going to sit still and, and watch. In fact, I need to know how they react. What will they do? Will they declare war? And 
Who are you thinking of sending there? London. I am honored to meet the daughter of Benito Mussolini. And I am also curious. Thank it would you. seem that you have a great influence over him. <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, my father doesn't let himself be influenced by anyone. This is your first time in London, isn't it? Yes. What impression has it made on you? Well, here everything seems so grandiose, so modern. And at the same time, it's tied to tradition. One breathes the air of the empire. I ask myself if Italy doesn't also have the right to remake itself with its ancient and glorious tradition and have its empire. Thank you. Mr. Prime Minister, my father has decided that we will go into Ethiopia. What will you do? Will you declare war on us? If you had decided to go into Africa, we certainly won't stand by and watch. But war seems like such a big word. No, Countess, I don't think so. What a marvelous pearl. It's stupendous. <laughs> Thank you. My father gave it to me as a wedding present. Look at her, how pretty she is. Huh? Who's Papa's best love? It's time to go to sleep. No, 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 no. I'm staying What with is Papa. this little no, mouse no, no, doing no. up? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Come here to your mama. And whose little feet are these? Mm -hmm. Who do these little feet belong to? Edda, let's get going. You're still in your nightgown. Come I'll on, take we're going to be late bed, as huh? usual. Thank you, of Emma. Course. I wanted to congratulate you on London, Edda. Uh, Grande continues to say marvelous things about you. Sure, about my clothes, my jewelry. About my stunning beauty. No, no, not only about that. What do you mean? You always say that women don't know anything about politics. Of course I continue to think that. It's just that, in this case, I must say, you're extraordinary. You'll be pleased, no? Don't tell me you're coming to the reception wearing that dress. Why? Don't you like it? It's not that I don't like it. I prohibit you from wearing it. It's indecent. <laughs> don't tell me you're jealous. Edda. Listen, Edda. Why don't you go on a nice vacation? Me, you, and the children. We've been apart for too long. Not now. I need to be near my father now. He says he needs me. around the world, beyond the mountains and beyond the seas, listen. A solemn hour is about to strike in the history of our fatherland. 20 million men are occupying the squares all over Italy. One heart, one will, one decision. Months away from the wheels of destiny, under the impulse of our calm determination, moves implacably towards the goal. It's not just an exercise. That goes after its objectives. But it's an entire populace of 44 million souls against which attempts are made to consume the darkest of injustices, taking away a small place in the sun. With Ethiopia, we were patient for There they are. Snap the photo. I want photos from here up until the embarkment. Smile. Thank you. Thank you very much. Count, will you need a 
bombing squad. Certainly. It will be called the desperate lady. I hate this situation. I can't take it any longer. When you're with your father, it seems that you don't suffer so. All you can do is talk about my father. You too? Smile, Lita. Show that you're the ideal wife of a fighter of the future. God only knows that investigating can make this. Be patient for another few hours. And then you won't see me for a long time. Maybe I won't come back. Sometimes you don't come back from war, Ida. Don't even joke about it. Do you realize what you just said? I made one mistake after the other with you. And I let you get further away. I was wrong too. I want to leave with a promise. Everything will start over. of Ethiopia. Fascist Italy attacks Ethiopia. Lightning war? Mussolini needs to believe in himself again. Economic sanctions against Italy. The sovereigns offer their wedding rings to the fatherland. that ties you to a man like Chiana. I love him. Poor Anna. Yours is a really badly hidden love. Is it true that Badoglio suggested the use of asphyxiating gases? Yes. A drastic solution is needed. This war needs to end immediately with a crushing victory at any cost! Otherwise, the sanctions will strangle us. But isn't it prohibited? <laughs> Gas against those savages? Our civilization has to prevail over the Abyssinians. Where is Edda? In Capri, with the children. Too bad. Galeazzo is returning to Rome for one day. To do what? Problems of health, I believe. Something to do with the ears. I'll take the opportunity to make him take part in the Great Council. I don't like your Galeazzo. He's a calculator, and that's all. Now that he acts like a little duce, imitating you in everything and for everything, it's really become ridiculous. That is why I trust him. Yes, but to the point of having him go into the Great Council? <laughs> Congratulations! I'm sorry, Liz. But how can I? No, I don't think so. It's not possible.
Welcome back, Countess. Is my husband home? I want to surprise him. Yes, Countess. <gasps> you certainly moved well. There's nothing left but becoming Secretary of Foreign Affairs. I won't deny it. It's my goal. But I don't trust the Germans. The Duce and I aren't in agreement on this topic. But you have other points of strength. Edda. Precisely. <laughs> of course not. You don't marry Mussolini's daughter just by chance, huh? Thanks to her, you're the Duce's pet, his heir, his designed successor. You did well. Alessandro, I can't understand why people don't believe that, that I'm in love with my wife, and she's the first not to. Pietro. Madam? Don't tell the Count that I was here. Yes, all right. Edda. No, Excellency. Your car is ready. The baggage has been loaded. Come now, Edda. Don't say foolish things. My house is your house. The room is ready, and I absolutely won't let you leave this time of night. Thank you. Enough with these cigarettes. Come on. Get this down at least. It's warm and good for you. But I'm not sick. I'm furious, that's what I am. When we come back, we'll start everything over. Stupid as I am, I fall for it each time. Why am I in love with a man like this? Try not to think about it. And stop talking about this Galeazzo. This time it doesn't end here. Was arriving this morning? I had things to do. I'm going to see other children. I put them to sleep. You'll see them in the morning. Did you have fun while I was at war? At least this is what they told me. There are many people who like to speak out of turn at times. Hurry up. The show starts in half an hour. We made a promise to each other before leaving. Lots of things happened afterwards. And as far as unkept promises and oaths, I think you beat me many times. What does that mean? What the devil are you talking about, Edda? Will you let me know? I'm talking about the fact that you always used me, right from the start. Ah, but this is an obsession. It's not possible that whatever I say or do... Exactly. Whatever you do. Unfortunately or fortunately, I heard what you and Pavolini said. 
And you even laughed while you were saying it. Ah, oh, sure, you don't know. I came back to Rome the day my father made you a part of the Great Council. I ran back here to embrace you. Edda, but I didn't. No, in fact, you didn't see me, because I never came into the studio. I had heard enough. I wish you weren't Mussolini's daughter. This is the only thing that destroys our love. Our love? If you care that much about it, give up your precious career. I can't change father. I don't know how you can take those remarks among friends as though they were the truth. You listen behind the door, like a servant. Give me a break. Do you want to know something? You are a servant, a pathetic servant. My father is your master, and you are nothing but a ridiculous copy of him. You aren't even aware of it. If you don't believe me, at least believe in your father, who is the only man you ever loved in your life. Do you think he would have given me this career if he thought that, that I married you with motives? We'll find this out when I go back to Germany. You're leaving? In two days. My father arranged a meeting with the Fuhrer. And as soon as I return, I will leave you. With or without my father's permission. Then we'll see what happens to, to your precious career. Galeazzo. Edda. Well done, Galeazzo. Go on, tell me, what does it feel like? Excuse me, I don't understand, Alessandro. You mean you don't know a thing? Must I be the one to give you the news? Mussolini made you Secretary of Foreign Affairs. Congratulations, my friend. You are the youngest secretary in the history of Europe. Congratulations. Enjoy the show. you'll have to change ideas. You can't leave me anymore. It's true, I can't. My father would take it personally. But just remember that I'm staying with you only out of obligation. What obligation? It's good for you to be the wife of the Secretary of Foreign Affairs. <sighs> remember that I'm a Mussolini. How can I forget you're the daughter of the Duce? I married you on purpose. You don't exist for me any longer. It's as though I already left you. Edda, by now we belong to each other. I only hope that you realize it before it's too late.
I can't offend Count Giano. I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong, Countess. I'm honored that the Ciano family thought of me in such circumstances. But I am forced to refuse. I have problems with my health. I have to go into the hospital in a few days for some tests. Verona, I'm sorry. I know you're the last person I should be calling. No, I'm glad you called me. What kind of friend would I be otherwise? Thank you. Uh, Emilio, I'm alone and I need your help. I have to save Galeazzo. How is he? How would you expect him to be? He's been penned up inside there for days and they won't even let me see him. And the children? They're at my brother Victorio's house in Rome. But now, I I'm afraid for them too. No one wants to take on Galeazzo's defense. They're going to give him one of the office lawyers during the trial. You can't give up, Eda. I'm not giving up, Emilio. My mother-in-law got me in an appointment with a dear friend of Galeazzo's father. He's my last hope. How can you think that the Duce could execute the father of his grandchildren? I've cared about Galizio since he was a child. You shouldn't be such a pessimist. But if he were sentenced? Of course. He'll be sentenced and it will be an exemplary one. But to think that they will then execute him. After the sentencing, he'll sign an appeal for pardon and he'll surely be free. Don't worry. Do you really believe it? But of course, of course. You must be brave. However, I have to tell you one thing. Galeazzo is wrong to trust his friends particularly those that he helped to get ahead. They are the ones that want him dead. Pavolini. Certainly. The new secretary of the party. Our informants gave us news that the battle formations at the head of the Bedoglio government are concentrating themselves here, in Val di Osla. It is up to us to make sure that the Badoglio armies don't have time to reorganize. Excellency. What is it? Countess Ciano is outside and would like to talk to you. I don't want to see her. First, the trial. The sentencing of Ciano and all the other traitors. Then, the hunt after all the enemies. <laughs> Mrs. Santos, isn't it too cold to be taking a walk? No, I feel better today.
I couldn't wait to see you. I missed you all so much. We'll stay with you now, Mama? No. And you must be braver than you have been until now. Emilio will take you to a beautiful place in Switzerland. No, I want to stay with you. It's not possible, Mowgli. But I promise you that I'll be there soon. With Papa? Of course. Papa sends you lots of kisses. And he wants you to be good and be patient, because soon we'll all be together again. Try not to worry. I'm staying here to help your father. Thank you, Emilio. You did well to hide in a clinic using a false name. Yes, but I have the impression I'm being spied on. I'm afraid that everything I've done hasn't helped at all. The party wants him sentenced. Pavolini. Yes, of course. His great friend, Pavolini. But also all the others. <sighs> but you are here now. To help care for our children, you'll keep them safe. Thank you. You'll be fine in Switzerland. You'll like it there. Come now, don't be sad. Think of all the nice things we'll do together. It's best that we go. Call me as soon as you get there. Ciao. Come with me. I love you. Come on. Come soon. Tell Papa hello. Bye, Mama. Yes, Tell of Papa that I think of him always. My love. Be careful, Emilio. And thank you for everything. Everything will be all right. Be strong. I'll take this. I would also like two pairs of socks. For your husband? He won't need them if they execute him like he deserves. Just a minute! Just a minute! Stop now! You can't keep him from seeing me anymore! It's not up to me, madam. Orders are orders. But I'm his wife. Can you at least let him have this? There's some socks in a sweater. Excellence. This is for you. It had to be screened in order for it to pass through superior orders. Did she say anything to you? No. Don't worry about it. Come on, Fabrizio. Here it is. Mowgli, the one. Uh. Here, Mom. Kick the ball. <laughs> Kick it. Oh! Come on, Mama. Pass it. Go, run. Go. Mama, Mama. <laughs> oh, the one, on, my run. little Lily. Oh, thank you. Run. Look, Mowgli, it's for you. Why do you call him Mowgli? His name is Martio. Oh, because Mowgli is. Uh, the name of the character in the Jungle Book, my favorite. The same is for you, your name Raymonda. But we call you Dindina, right? <laughs> Can I take him for a while? Come on. Here, you go to Papa. Little one, love, love, love of Papa, huh? No. No, 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 no. No. Put him here, put okay, him here. Okay. Yes. Okay. With his little snail. No, no, little With one. With his no. little snail. Listen, Edda. I... I don't want to be alone any longer, without my family. I want the children in Rome with me, and with you. Don't worry, I have no intention of letting them grow up in Capri. In a week I'll return to Rome, but I have to go back to Germany. 
Edda, don't kid yourself about Hitler. This affection, this regard for the Nazis. It's only part of a plan, and they're after your father. Do you understand? It's all part of a plan to make him digest the annexation of Austria. And what did you expect him to do? <sighs> Hitler was the only one to give us his support in the war with Africa. Therefore, to have an Italian Ethiopia, we have to have a Nazi Austria? What are you saying? That we should let Germany be and embrace England? <sighs> At this rate, I don't think that you'll be the Duce's pet for long. Listen, in half an hour, I'm leaving again for Rome. Have a good time. Why do you still not trust Hitler? I'm not at all against Hitler, but Duce, this obsession of his about the Jews is... Think about it. The Jews control two-thirds of the cultural and economic life of Vienna. If it weren't for the Nazis, they would have taken over everything. Duce, yes, but Rome is not Vienna, and fascism is not national socialism. However, we have excluded them from diplomatic career, and in my cabinet, we I'm are... I'm not interested. I've already said so to the others. The manifesto of the race has to be approved. <laughs> Too many Jews are taking on anti-fascist positions. I don't think that the Pope will care for any laws of persecution. No, this doesn't deal with persecution. Ours is discrimination. Why are you telling me these things, Galeazzo? Are you trying to say that you don't agree with me any longer? The Great Council of Fascism declares the urgent actuality of racial problems. It has declared, first, the prohibition of marriage between Italian men and Italian women with people belonging to the Semitic race. Second, persons of the Hebrew race cannot be admitted to any job or office on any level, public or private, which are attended by Italian pupils. People of the Hebrew race will not be permitted. We already have read it all, the manifesto of the race. Third. No entrance permitted to public exercises. Fourth, distancing from events reserved to Italian men and women. Fifth, the presence of members of the Semitic race are not allowed to attend any event reserved for Italian men and women. I am repeating to you that in Libya, Jews not only live peacefully with Christians and Muslims, but they are also faithful to the regime. Jews hate us because we're hunting them down. You don't want them to despise us because we're readmitting them. We must not underestimate the strength of the Vatican, Duce. Pius XI very clearly expressed his opposition to anti-Semitism. I am not underestimating the Pope's strength, but he must not underestimate mine. Now enough, let's vote. Now, who was in favor of the Manifesto of the Race? The Manifesto of the Race has been approved by the Great Council. Please, you park it. Yes, madam. Edda. Fine. Mowgli, my love. I'm here. I'm here, my little frog. Oh, God, he's burning up. It's all right. He will go away. You'll see. But why isn't the doctor here? He just left. He gave him some medicine to make his fever go away. What does he have? Oh, my darling, don't cry. No, be good. He'll get over it, right? Mowgli is strong. He'll be all right. Don't worry. Mowgli? He fell asleep. Luckily, the fever has gone down a little. I put him in his bed. 
You should go to bed too. How did the council go? Today we enacted the racial laws. And you said you didn't agree. <clears throat> I'm confused, confused. I feel as though I climbed aboard too quickly on a train that we won't be able to stop. Why are you such a pessimist? You and Papa have mediated between the French, the Germans, and the English at the Munich Conference. <sighs> there won't be a war. Of course, the crisis is over for now. For now. But us? Edda, for us? Us? We find each other again only during moments of danger and fear. Does this mean there's something still between us? No. There's nothing left. Edda is a magnificent girl, intelligent and unscrupulous. But she doesn't like crowds. That's why she doesn't feel loved. It's a shame because she has great qualities. I don't know. Maybe it's an ulcer, maybe something worse. He should withdraw. In fact, he should have done it two years ago. That was the right time. He gave Italy an empire. The people adored him. Papa will never let it go. Why don't you send for the children? I'm making him the pasta dish that he likes so much. I told you, Mama. This evening I'm going back to Capri. Always traveling, huh? Alone more and more. You'll never find what you're looking for if you go on like this. I myself don't know what I'm looking for. I've never understood you. You know, you get too involved with your father instead of staying with your husband and with your children. Mama, it's not that easy. Do you think it was easy for me? There were times I would have gone crazy without you children. I would have. I didn't want him in the beginning, you know. He was a pauper, a bragger, too fiery. And then when I saw him with that pistol in his hand, threatening to kill everyone if I didn't go with him, I understood that he was my man. Since then, nothing has changed. But you and I are different, Mama. Only you could have stayed by Papa's side for all of those years and put up with all of his insults. I just stayed faithful to my choice. Besides, I didn't marry the wrong man like you did. But why do you hate Galeazzo so much? He's a social climber. You're wrong. He shows how much he likes power. And he is disliked for having married me. You think that's strange? He does his work well. Countess, your driver asked me to tell you that he will be late. I'm sorry. I have to go. It's not good, all this solitude. A pact with Germany? Black on white? Exactly like that. Having been able to finally throw the Reds out of Madrid was a formidable victory for fascism. It's a pact between Italy and Germany. It will make everyone understand the direction the world is taking. Duce, I... I always followed you. You're an example okay, for Okay, okay, get to the point. But I think perhaps we... We didn't weigh the risks well enough that an alliance with Germany can render the relationships we have with all the other countries more difficult. Pius XIII is also very worried. Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia. He could also demand Poland, and this 
this would inevitably mean war. These arguments, are you writing them down in your diary? One day you'll let me read it. Of course, if you wish. However, you and Pius XII, you can both remain calm. In the pact, a clause is foreseen whereby Germany commits not to stir up new conflicts in Europe. The world will thank us. And our hands will be free to create our projects in Albania. And soon we will disembark at Durazzo. Within a month, Edda will be able to admire you while you parade victoriously on the streets of Tirana. As far as Hitler, don't worry. I'll hold him at bay. In an heroic undertaking which gave new life to the splendors of Scipione, Caesar, and Augusto, the Duce Benito Mussolini made the Italian Empire even larger. In one week, our valorous troops showed they were right about Albania and King Zogu. The Albanian people welcomed His Excellency Count Ciano, applauding his walk along the streets of Tirana with generosity and conviction. Survivor from the triumphs of Albania, His Excellency Secretary of Foreign Affairs Count Galeazzo Ciano arrived in Berlin on May 22nd, where he signed a pact that unequivocally ratifies the alliance between fascist Italy and National Socialist Germany. A pact that we could define hard as steel. The whole world is looking. The whole world is looking to him. All I, all I see is a puppet. Eternal sanction of I can't understand why you keep giving him space. Common boundaries now set forever. You're growing a snake a in your chest. He's just an idiot. Has been created between Italy and Germany. And That's trying to imitate you badly. Agreed upon, the two governments reconfirmed the politics showing itself to be highly useful both for the development of interests... There are difficult days ahead. As much as for the security of peace in Europe. And I, I need men I can trust. Galeazzo's young, intelligent, but above all, he is my son-in-law. Everything he has, he owes to me. He would never betray me. The weak are the most dangerous. Forget about steel. This pact is dynamite. Did you know there's a clause that keeps us from entering into the war with the Germans? But I advised your father not to trust Hitler. Calm down, Galeazzo, if Papa accepts No, I won't calm down at all. And you could also lose your head. Germany imposed their clause on us and didn't accept ours. If the Germans provoke war, we'll be forced to join in also. Do you understand? Hello. Galeazzo. Bad news. Galeazzo, Papa's arrived. Thank you for coming, Papa, to Leghorn. Uh, your father was a great man and a great fascist. It is immensely painful for me. Thank you, Duce. Condolences. The funeral takes place tomorrow morning. Excuse me. What are you doing? Are you crying? It was his father. Pull yourself together, son. I know you were very close to your father, but you're not the only one. It's a great loss for everyone. 
Political activity will destroy your energy. Pact with Germany gives Italy due importance on the international level. Papa, Galeazzo is afraid the Germans are soon going to drag us into a war. Leave it be, Edda, please. If... if you'll allow me to... I want to go to bed. Uh, I'm very tired. I will come with you. I'm sure the Danzig Corridor will suffice for the Germans. But if Galeazzo is worried, we have to clear up this point. I want you to meet with Ribbentrop once again. You must tell the Germans that at this time Italy is, is in an impossible position to start a, a conflict. A general war would be disastrous for everyone. Peace is necessary for us as well. You must convince him. I will do everything in my power, Duce. Salzburg, 1939. Is it the Danzig Corridor that you're after? Yesterday, perhaps. Today we want much more. We want war. But the world will turn against you. No. The conflict will be quick and confined. France and England won't make a move. I wish you were right, but I think instead you're grossly wrong. However, I repeat that Italy is not able to sustain a war at this time. Do you want to break the pact? I'm not at liberty to make this decision. I'm coming back to Rome, disgusted with Germany, with its leaders, with its way of acting. They tricked us and lied. And today, they're about to pull us into an adventure that we didn't want. They can compromise the regime and the country. The deciding hour has struck. At the expiration of the ultimatum made to Poland, Hitler gave way to military action against the enemy country. England and France betrayingly replied by declaring war on Germany. Europe has gone to war. The world is shaken by this new catastrophe. The Duce wisely has declared his desire to stay out of the conflict. Italy has chosen the road of non-belligerence. No, not on the table. It serves no purpose. Did you choose the wine for dinner? Yes, yes. Thank you, Emma. Listen to me, Etta. I need your help. Yes. I need you to help convince your father to break ties with Hitler. Do we have to talk about this now? Etta, war has exploded, which won't last according to the Germans. We shouldn't allow ourselves to get involved. Stop it, Galeazzo. You always think you know more than anyone else, even father. I can't believe. Do you want war also? Italy isn't ready. I trust my father. We made a pact with the Germans and it has to be respected. But it's folly. We enter into war and we lose. It's a disaster. And if we win instead? Maybe we aren't ready, but Hitler is invincible. He has already conquered Poland, Holland, Norway, Belgium, and France is on its knees. No one is invincible. Not even Hitler. And not even your father. What did you say? If this is what you think of him, you should quit. The guests. Edda. You have to quit, Galeazzo. If you have the courage. We oui, will. Oui. Ah, we oui, de call. Excellency. Ah, je, je, je vous donne ma parole. Oui. Au revoir. Au revoir. Well, the ambassador seems available. 
Perhaps, perhaps we can organize this meeting with France and England. Call the Secretary of Foreign Affairs in London. That's not possible. What do you mean it's not possible? England has interrupted all phone communication with Italy. Galeazzo, did you Leave know? Leave me alone. Let me be. But what do you want to do? You are the idiots, imbeciles. You are the instigators. We're going to war because the crazy old man is regressing back into childhood. Careful, Galeazzo. You're losing your sense of measure. War is unavoidable at this point. Is it possible you can't understand this? Pavolini, one cabinet was enough for you, huh? Already they're wagging your tail with your tongue Look hanging out. Look who's preaching all of a sudden. I heard yelling. Did something happen to the children? No, Duce, not the children. Come closer. I received a letter from Churchill. Listen to this. It is too late now to prevent a river of blood running between the people of Great Britain and Italy. Do you know what this letter means? That Churchill's afraid. France and Deladier are afraid. America and Roosevelt are afraid. They're all afraid of us. Yes, but it's also possible that the United States will get into the picture. America is far away, and France at this point is down on its knees. Duce, I implore you to take Churchill's letter into consideration. Your reasons are of no interest to me. What I need from you now are a few thousand deaths to put me at the victor's table. Up until now, non-belligerence was a correct choice. Prudent. Nothing is obtained through the use of prudence. Maybe the time has come for Italy's big leap. Have you decided to enter the war? And if we lose? It would be a catastrophe. Hmm. You have to have faith in me, Edda. Until now, I haven't made any mistakes, and I won't make any this time. Well, of course, Germany is about to win. In fact, I could sit back and watch while the others make history. No. <laughs> Neither can I. I want to be by your side, Papa. And also at the side of our soldiers. They will fight and I will be the war nurse. War nurse? The war hasn't begun yet. And you want to go to the front? And what about your son, Zeta? And your husband? I don't see what the problem is. It's not like I'm fighting the war. My father knows what he's doing. And it's only right that I do my part. Look, I give up. You and I will never agree with each other. Never! Never! Mr. Ambassadors. You've probably already understood the motive for my invitation. Although it's not very smart, I believe I have understood. Today, June 10th, 1940, Italy has declared war on France and on England. It is a blow inferred on a man that's already down. Thank you for using velvet gloves. And then, I still can't consider you an enemy. The Germans are hard masters. You will become well aware also. Don't let them kill you. Rome, June 10th, 1940. Our heart by destiny is beating in the heavens of our fatherland. The time of irrevocable decisions. The declaration of war has already been delivered to the ambassadors of Great Britain and France. We are going down in the fields against the plutocratic and reactionary democracies of the West, who put obstacles in the way and who often harass the existence of the Should march of the Italian the people. That I've left. The order is but one. I'm sad. Categorical and Very binding sad. for all. The adventure begins. To win! God help Italy. And we will win! Japanese planes bomb Pearl Harbor. The United States joins war. Great British victory in Northern Africa. 
Hitler's troops forced to surrender at Stalingrad. Radio London is on the air. Colonel Stevenson is speaking. The Italians have lost Ethiopia. Their troops are rooted in Russia. Their cities are being bombarded each day. What are the Italians waiting for to rebel? The general quarters of the armed forces communicates. The enemy attack supported by powerful air formations has continued violently along the front, especially in the southern sector. Conforming with the order they received, the troops of the Axis are giving in to new positions. Italian and Germanic units, though isolated and overpowered by enemy forces, fought strenuously against the strongholds they were entrusted with. In the end, the enemy managed to win despite our troops' heroic resistance. The situation is getting worse. Duce, I think that there's an official way out. We can make a separate peace. Are you saying that everything was useless? Even my brother Bruno's death? Never. We will move forward until the end, until victory. How can we talk of victory? After Stalingrad? After the Anglo-Americans arrived in Morocco, and after the Japanese lost the Pacific? How can we talk of victory? Of the victory of Italian fascism at the side of German National Socialism. Only the weak are afraid, have lost faith in our two nations. What is it that you want to do now? I have decided a rapid change of guard in government. I will no longer be secretary, but you can decide what you want to do. If this is what you want. I have nothing against you, Galeazzo. You've done an excellent job. But now I need new forces. You're free to choose your new job, whatever you want. Lieutenant in Albania, or ambassador to Spain, or ambassador to the Holy See. No, Albania, no. I don't want to become the executioner of the very people that I promised brotherhood to. It's all right to be the ambassador to the Holy See. Be careful, though. They don't like Germans there. You risk attracting even more antipathy from them. However, if that's what you really want... These diaries will no longer serve to diminish my responsibilities, but they will at least help me to understand that all Germans have betrayed and condemned us. What are you thinking about? That I will no longer write my diaries. I'm stopping at 40. I'm sorry. Really. I don't know why he did it. I don't understand what's happening anymore. I'm tired. Confused. Then why are you leaving? There's no need for you to leave. The war is lost. 
And your father continues to make mistakes. My father is only trying to save the country. Maybe there are things we didn't foresee. Germany seemed to be invincible. The war was only going to last a short time. And all those Jews. I wonder what will happen to them. Do you know what they mean by the final solution? Are they really taking them to Madagascar? Do you remember Dino Mandolfi? Weren't you engaged to him? I learned that he's about to be deported to Germany with his entire family. I want to help him. while we're all dying of hunger. I'm sorry, it's finished. There's nothing left. Can you give me something to eat, ma'am? I'm sorry. There's nothing left. But I'm hungry. Do something. You have to do something. I'm hungry. You don't understand because your belly is full. I'm starving. People are desperate. We urgently need food, medicine, first aid. We don't know how to go on anymore. I'm sure that Rome is keeping all of you in the dark about the real situation of the country. You have to intervene somehow. This war cannot continue. With much love, your daughter Edda. Edda is right. You're surrounded by people that are lying to you, that are plotting behind your back. No one is plotting. The truth is only one, unfortunately. Italians in 1915 were better than they are today without doubt. As for the Sicilians, the same is true of what I said about the Neapolitans, that this war is hard but necessary. Hmm. What will become of the Italians, a populace that's Nordic? Is this what you intend to write back to your daughter? 50,000 lire. He sent me 50,000 lire saying I can use it as I think best. What does this mean to him? Alms compensation? For whom? I think you're right. My father listens to no one anymore. Listen to me, Etta. You are exhausted. You can go to Leghorn with the children to my mother's house if you don't want to stay in Rome. No, there's too much to do here. I can't. Countess. I have to go. Wait, wait, listen. I wanted to tell you. Dino Mandolfi and his family are are being deported. Well, you tried. God be with them. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello, Edda? Hello? What is it now? Countess, you must return to Rome at once. The Anglo-Americans have landed in Sicily. I've seen the conditions our country is reduced to with my own eyes. I don't understand anything anymore. I'm even doubting you. Stop it, I told you. You're not well? I'm sorry. This didn't help at all. Papa, I want to know how you view what's going on. Enough, Edda, stop it now. No, I have to know what you think. I said that's enough! <clears throat> Everything that was good about fascism, he destroyed. And the country is on the brink of ruin. Mussolini has to step down, leave the army in the hands of the king. 
I don't, uh, I don't see how... Uh... And first you need to sound the king out of whatever it is that you have in mind. He's the only authority that can reassure us if it were to prove necessary. The king necessary is already to... aware. And many others, the same as he. Mussolini will never accept, that is, if he isn't forced to. That's just it. The great council needs to be convinced. I'll take care of calling it to order, and then we will try to reach a majority. Grandy, do you know the risks? I know. Our destiny is at stake. But this country needs to be saved. Galeazzo, can I count on your agreement? I have to give it some thought. I realize that in your case, this matter becomes a private issue. You can abstain from voting. It's not necessary that you make a showing. No one will condemn you if you abstain. The country will need you later. Don't go there, please. There is no plotting. At least no more than usual. But why do you want to go? You of all people who has never trusted anyone. The council starts at five and I don't want to get there late. I'm going. Have them all arrested, Benito. Before it even starts. Hi, it's me. Hi. I wanted to come to Leghorn this evening, but... Why aren't you coming? The children are waiting for you. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not able to. What do you have to do, Galeazzo? Hello? Hello? A meeting, Etta, a meeting. We will finish very late. I'm sorry. The children? You know how they are. They're still on the beach until the sun sets. Okay. Tell them that I'll call them tomorrow, huh? Well... Bye, Edda. Bye. Bye. Did you bring the pistol? No, why? Grandi's suggestion. Grandi, Grandi, excuse me for a minute. Why did you say we should come armed? This wasn't in the packs. You never know, anything's possible. If needed, I have two grenades in my pocket. But stay calm, the chief of police is with us. Hail to the Duce! Your dictatorship lost us the war, Duce. You yourself said in 1924, all the factions are perishing, even our own, as long as the nation lives on. The moment has come to make the faction perish. Today, July 24th, 1943, I am presenting the Council with the Order of the Day, in which it asks the head of the government that the command of the armed forces and the supreme initiative of all decisions be put back in the hands of the king. Furthermore, a series of reforms and the end of the regime, with its useless and damaging production of frills and masks, are requested by the membership of the party.
the restoration of freedom of the press, suppressing the cabinet of popular culture and its ridiculous and disastrous excesses. Fascism must return to its origins. Comrades, this must be the time of collective responsibility. We're dealing with the salvation of Italy. Decidedly, luck has turned its back on me. Damn traitor. now. Duce, you had still spoken to us about loyalty to the pacts, but today, in front of the ruin of Italy, we were to strip ourselves of the alliance with Germany. We wouldn't be considered the traitors, but the betrayed. Hitler provoked the war without consulting nor pre-alerting the Italian alliance. No, no, no. Chiana was courageous, and the others also seemed convinced. I trust no one. We still may need to be ready to shoot. Gentlemen, a quarter past midnight. The session is starting again. you aware that among the many accusations you throw at the regime, you seem to forget one of the most frequent on your lips, the people. You know very well what I'm talking about, of the fabulous wealth some of you made. And another thing, you're also forgetting that many of you have always approved the majority of fascist laws. Without putting them up for discussion, I have enough to ruin all of you in here. As for you, Galeazzo, when you became part of my home, together with you came betrayal. Think of how you betrayed Balbo. You persecuted him beyond his death. You didn't even receive his wife. The order of the day poses very serious problems of personal dignity. What would happen if I were to take it to the king? And if the king, in turn, were to renew his faith in me? What would the position be then of your highnesses in front of the king, in front of the country, in front of the party, or in front of me personally? Do you think it would be easy for me to forget the affront you are making against me? You all know I have in hand a key capable of posing definitive end to the war situation in Italy and the world over. But I certainly won't tell you which it is. It's gotten late. I'm very tired. I propose to postpone the session. No, Duce. When it was about the Balila, or about extra work, you kept us here as late as four in the morning. Now that we are dealing with problems of vital importance for the country, I think we can and must continue. I ask that we vote on my order of the day.
No. I am not in favor. Suardo? I abstain. De Bono? Yes. Tringali Casanova? No. Tavecchi? Yes. Chiano? You can abstain from voting. If I weren't to vote now, I wouldn't feel like a man. Yes. Chinetti? Yes. Acerbo? Yes. Pareshi? Yes. Galbiati? No. Gotardi? Yes. Demarsico? No. Grandi? Yes. Federzoni? Yes. Albini? Yes. Bastiani? Yes. Bowtie? Yes. Di Stefani? Yes. Alfieri? Yes. Boferini Guidi? No. Marianelli? Yes. Bellella? No. Bignardi? Yes. Fine. Grandi's order of the day has been approved. With this, you have provoked the crisis of the regime. You must be satisfied. Now, now the session is closed. Let's watch our backs while going out. Shame! Betrayers! You voted against the Duce! Against fascism! And now what? The Duce will tend to the party, and the king to the war. It's simple. You are very courageous, young man. It's a shame that you won't live long. You have to come home, Edda, immediately. Are you crazy? Why should I come home? Don't argue. Take the children and return to Rome. But why? What's happened? Just leave and do what I say, Edda! <laughs> Can't allow me to help. Let me be! Everyone go away! Everyone! Excuse me, Count. Are you crazy? You're still here? All the others who voted like you have run away. The Duchi plans to have you arrested. Come to my house. No one will look for you I there. Know. I thank you, Mikhail. But you have to go also. Go! If they come here, they'll arrest you too. <coughs> Go to your room. When will Papa be here? I said go to your room. I understand. I understand. Edda. What is that pistol doing there? What's going on? We voted against your father. I voted against your father. This was what you didn't have the courage to tell me? But I wasn't able to, Etta. You're still his daughter. It all had to remain a total secret. But how dare you? Whose idea was it? You can tell me I'm not an agent of Ovra. The salvageable needed to be saved. It was in the air. Much better that we were to have started it. However, faith in your father has remained intact. Of course. Why not? Where is he now? The king had him arrested. What? I didn't know. They told me now. It wasn't foreseen. You're a traitor. By betraying my father, you've also betrayed me. I'm a Mussolini. You have endangered my life and the lives of our children. We are lost unless the Germans break him out. Is this what you were counting on? Me, the Duce's daughter, covering your back. Really perfect. No, you haven't understood anything, Etta. 
The end of your father is also the end for me. Fascism is dead. Dead! And after they have him arrested, they'll come after me and the other officials. Go now. Go now and leave me alone. Leave me to my fate. Go away! No, I'm staying here. I won't allow myself to be tossed away. Until now, my name helped you, right? Take this. Kill me. You kill me. I can't do it. It will look like suicide, and without me, you'll be free. What are you saying? Have you gone mad? <sighs> However things go, I will always be a traitor to the others. <sighs> I made a mistake, Etta. I ruined everything. Shoot me. I never thought we would have come to this point. Shoot me. I can't live without you. Edda. 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 May God help us. At least you could have avoided firing the help. Edda, it's time. His Majesty the King welcomed the resignation of Prime Minister and Head of Government, Cavalier Benito Mussolini. Nominated as Prime Minister and Head of Government is the Marshal of Italy, Cavalier Pietro Badoglio. His Majesty Grandi, the King and the other officials of the armed have all sneaked away. It seems that Grandi may have already abandoned Italy. The living legend of the father, it was all organized and... And I understood nothing. Uh, nothing. You have to get out, too. You have to do as they've done. They cut the telephone wires. Levetti. No, Badoglio will never let me leave. No one will help me. No one. And then how can I leave you, Edda? And you and the children? We'll escape together. Me, you, and the children. We'll find, we'll manage somehow. Etta, but who will help us? Who will help us? The only person who gave me his trust. The only person who can help us. Hitler. Just a minute. But it's summer. I'm hot. Why wear two dresses, Mama? Let's go. Where are we going? Are we going to the park, Mama? No, darling. We're going to Spain. Get in the car. Come on. Courage, get in. You keep the Mama. Put them in a safe place. Come now, stay calm. As soon as it's possible, you'll join us. You... You never trusted the Nazis. <laughs> but I trust Edda. I owe it to her. Countess Chiano, we're ready. Climb aboard. My husband isn't here yet. He's coming. I won't move from here until I see him.
hours at most, and we'll be safe. Edda, we're not going to Spain. How is that? Well, I'm certainly not a great pilot, but this is not the right route, believe me. Edda, where are you going? Countess? Where are we going? This isn't the route for Madrid. We are making a technical stop over in Munich. Luciano, Countess, your departure from Spain has been postponed. In the meantime, you will be our guests. Good morning. I am Major Beats. From this moment on, you can come to me for anything you need. I am your interpreter. But can we leave here, go where we want? In the park, of course. Outside, no. Please, the apartments are on the above floors. Fjorda. Heil Hitler. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag. Nachträglich. For your birthday. It was a few days ago, right? Thank you. Können Sie mir sagen, warum Ihr Vater die Führung an den großen Lager gegeben hat? The Führer wants to know why your father made the mistake of sending for the Great Council. Führer. I don't understand. You promised us Spain, and instead you were holding us prisoners here in Germany. Danke, I believe you know, Countess, that Italy signed the armistice with the enemy. The German army is taking countermeasures. It was Bogdoglio, not my father, who signed it. Let us leave, and you won't hear us spoken of again. Why, your accommodations aren't within your social standing? Don't think that Spain is a safe place. Der Endsieg Deutschlands ist so sicher wie das Amen in der Kirche. Wir brauchen nur etwas Geduld. German victory is certain. One only needs to wait a while longer. No! The war is lost. Fascism and Nazism are over. Maybe we are still in time to make peace with the enemy. Russia. Nie! Niemals! Das ist so ausgeschlossen wie Feuer und Wasser zu vermählen. Wir werden den Kampf fortführen, bis der letzte Deutsche weg von dieser Erde gekippt ist. No, never. We will continue to fight until every last Bolshevik is killed. We will free your father. I'm gonna get you. I'll tickle you. I'm gonna get you. Countess. Countess, we have good news. Your father has been freed from the Germanic troops. He will arrive in Munich in the afternoon, and your family will also be here soon. A car will come for you later today so that you can greet the Duce. Thank you. You're welcome. How wonderful the Germans are. The truth is they can't wait to see us slaughter each other. They will be disappointed. I'm sure my father won't hold you responsible. You'll see it will be all like before. We'll go back to being united.
You'll see, Fabrizio. Now we'll talk to Grandpa, and we'll all return home. Oh, God, Benito, what have they done to you? I've been on a slight diet. At least my ulcer doesn't act up anymore. <sighs> Thank God you were safe in here with us once again. Hmm. How are you? Are you still my little wild one, eh? Come over here. Grandpa's too tired. You're too heavy. Get up, oh. ugly. Come. I'll run your bath. Papa really doesn't seem the same. Did you see him? I'm worried. Luckily, the children are okay. At least that. But soon we will go back to Italy, and then we'll feel better. What does he think he'll do? The fascist republic. The revolution will start over. Not with clubs, though. This time with machine guns, like Pavolini said. Pavolini recently made a career, huh? He's even the party's secretary. Dindina, on your feet. Culture to the table. Mowgli, darling. Come on, eat your soup. It's good. No, I don't like it. But at least taste it. Come on, Mowgli. What did Hitler say? He said he still has faith in me. Naturally. I beg you to forgive me. I hope you'll hear me out. I wasn't able to understand that I... Sit down and eat. Frau Beats, we are taking a walk without leaving the park. Of course. You can do anything you want. You're too kind. I think she's here to keep us under control. Mm. We have to find a way to get out of this hell. Did the ambassador answer you? No. Edda. There's only one way to get out of this absurd situation. You have to go back to Italy, go to my mother, and take back my diaries. You're the only one who can do this. Why your diaries? Because Germany will lose the war. Then many others will try to separate their own responsibilities from Hitler's. My diaries will be useful, very useful. I'll find a way to leave. We'll succeed. We will succeed. I didn't see you. 
What are you doing in the dark? I have to go back to Munich with the diaries right away. Galeazzo is waiting for them. Fortunately, his father isn't here to see this. I beg you, save him. Now that my father's no longer in Germany, it will be easier to help him. Edda, you don't think that Mussolini wants to vindicate himself? He's the Duce again. He will show his greatness, his clemency. <sighs> I'm certain he will save Galeazzo, the father of my children. It was Mussolini who created Galeazzo. It will be Mussolini who will destroy him. You will be transferred to Italy and handed over to the Italian police. So you're a bunch of damned liars. You promised to deport us to Spain. I was right. I was right. There isn't any reason that we should trust you. The extradition was requested by the secretary of your national party, Pavolini. The Fuhrer limited himself to accept. You have a visitor. Edda. Excellency. My love. My love. I'll give you some time. Children, and how are you? I'm staying in a clinic under a false name. A sort of hotel where no one knows me. They didn't want to let me come in here. They drove me crazy before giving me permission. The children are safe in a Swiss convent. Thank you, God. It will make it all easier. When does the trial begin? I don't know. You still have the diaries, right? Yes. Don't give them to anyone for any reason. If I don't get out of here... What are you saying? You will get out. I spoke with your family's lawyer with a friend of your father, Valagusa. You know him, right? Yes. Yes. Be calm. You'll make it. Edda. Edda, what happened at the Great Council on July 25th... is a shameful act for the Italian Social Republic. A shame to cancel out forever. Even Pavolini. My great friend, Pavolini, speaks only of Vendetta. They all want me dead. Galeazzo, Galeazzo, listen. Shh. Even you. You're safer here in Italy. Go. Join the children. Good morning. Frabitz, what are you doing here? Aren't you an interpreter? Who do you work for? Who's in charge over you, Hitler or somebody else? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the talk is over. I made a wish for the new year. No, actually there too. That you'll be free and that no one will talk about us. Edda, Edda. I don't want to die. I have a proposal to make. It's about your diaries.
I don't understand your hesitation, Duce. The special tribunal has been nominated. Now it has to be allowed to do its work. The Nazis are behaving as if Chiana were in their jurisdiction. They have the SS controlling him, and it's even a woman. They she spends many hours alone with him. The German comrades freed you. Without them, the Social Republic wouldn't exist. If you will permit me, Duce. But Chiano is the worst of the traitors, the most ungrateful of all. Your response should be a strong and firm one. The biggest mistake you can make at this moment is for you to appear as weak. There's a visitor to see you. Should I have him come up? No. I'll go down. It's cold. A breath of air can only do me good. Good morning, Mrs. Santos. What's happened? Why are you here? I have to talk to you. It's important. Maybe I can be of help to you. Germany is on the brink of a catastrophe, and Himmler is looking for a way to save himself. In your husband's diaries, there is proof that the war was wanted only by Hitler. It would be an advantageous exchange for all, the diaries, in exchange for your husband's freedom. I don't know, I'd have to talk to Galeazzo, but I haven't had permission to see him, not even at Christmas. Your husband agrees. He sends you this. It contains the necessary indications to recover the pages that will be examined as a sampling before going ahead with the final exchange. There isn't much time. The trial will begin in five days. Everything needs to be done by then. Let me know as soon as possible. If you accept, I will tell you how to proceed. Chiano. You can do it! If Mussolini succeeds in saving you, they will be obliged to save us as well! Leave me be, Marinelli. Mussolini won't help anyone, much less me. But I don't want to die! I thought Grande's order of the day was a pact! I thought that the Duce agreed! What was I to know? It was my first great council! Crying won't help you. If we have to die, we must take it like men. You finally decide to answer me. Papa, I have Galeazzo's diaries here, and I could give them to the Americans or to the press. Do you know what's written? It says that you are a terrible man, a weak man, that you are the only one responsible for everything, that you always change opinion, that you had it said to the Albanian soldiers, you will never be more than assassins, rapists! Papa, answer me! Papa, are you there? Oh. Your husband's pages were reviewed and considered interesting. The exchange can take place. Where? I'll bring you the diaries. Not to me. My part ends here. The exchange will take place tomorrow evening at 9 at kilometer 10 of the road in Verona, which takes you to Brescia. You must be available there with the diaries. Will Galeazzo be there? No. You will continue on to Switzerland. The Count will meet you there. No, I don't trust it. You Germans have already led me into a trap once. I want some guarantees. No guarantees. You have to trust. I want to talk with Galeazzo. It's not possible. You don't feel like doing it. Galeazzo is the only reason for my being. Emilio, it's Edda. I feel so alone. I'll wait for you tomorrow at five. No excuses. Bye. You didn't want to help me either. Realistically, I'm risking losing my husband as much as you are yours. I will be the wife of a traitor and I'll be extraordinarily proud of it. I'll wear my husband's name with pride. It's an honor for me.
This is the last letter I'm writing, Mama. Everything is over between us. Edda. Mrs. Santos! Mrs. Santos! She left the clinic and she didn't come back. Why didn't you advise me immediately? Find her quickly. Yes, Tuche. What is she up to, crazy woman? For a man that isn't even worthy of her. What happened? Two tires exploded. I can only repair one of them. What time is it? 825. We'll never make it. The exchange is... The exchange is set for nine. I'm sorry I can't accompany you, but I have an important appointment. I could find you a room for the night. No, thank you. Everything is over between us, Edda. Call the president of the special tribunal for me right away. I don't care if he's asleep. Wake him up. Bikini, listen carefully to me. At the end of the trial, you have to hand down your sentence without looking anyone in the face. Make sure this is very clear. Understood? Dauphine! Can we know where my daughter wound up? It's 11. I have to go now. Where are you? Where are you?
What are you doing here at the German command post? Have you gone crazy? You've come to hide in the wolf's den, Countess. I was late, but maybe we can still work something out. No. Even if you arrived on time, there wouldn't have been any exchange. The operation was canceled late yesterday afternoon by Hitler in person. He discovered Himmler's plan. I did everything I could to save your husband. Believe me. Why? Are you in love with him? Or have you been playing a double game with the Germans? Don't ask yourself so many questions, Etta. Now is not the time. You have to go. These are the instructions for your escape into Switzerland. I'm not leaving him! I'm not going without Galeazzo. Listen, Etta. The sentence will be passed in two hours. In case of acquittal, the Republican guards will open fire on the accused in the courtroom. The lawyers have already been advised to stand aside and to lower their heads at that moment. No! 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 no. Do as I tell you. Go. Your husband wants only for you to join your children and to continue living. The Extraordinary Special Tribunal. The President. The Extraordinary Special Tribunal declares the defendants guilty of the crimes attributed to them and the resulting sentence. Botai, Bastianini, Albini, Federzoni, De Stefani, Bignardi, Alfieri, Di Vecchi, Grandi, all by default. The detainees, Pereschi Carlo, De Bono Emilio, Gotardi Luciano, Gianno Galeazzo, Marinelli Giovanni are sentenced to death. And sentences furthermore, Janetti Tullio to the penalty of imprisonment for 30 years. Galeazzo, I wrote down a request for pardon. I'll never sign it. It would be as though admitting guilt, and I'm not guilty. But if you don't sign it also, the request will be useless. Don't you understand that it's all a farce? De Bono, my signature would not make any difference. The request for pardon won't serve any purpose. Calciano, you cannot jeopardize the lives of others. The Führer's orders is to consider the Ciano case as a question of exclusive internal Italian nature. The German authorities must not interfere. As head of the SS in Italy, I cannot give my opinion. I know. Of course I know, General Wolf. But uh, I'm asking you to give me a, your personal opinion, uh, confidential. Uh, uh, how would you behave in my place? If in your place, I would remain inflexible. And what does the Führer think? The Führer does not believe that the death sentence will be carried out. And a missed execution 
could damage me in comparison with the Fuhrer? Yes, and very much. Ah. Thank you, General. If they were to be presented to the Duce, he would reject them without hesitation. But the party has no intention of asking the Duce to reject a request for pardon that bears his son-in-law's signature. Aren't you the one who has the authority to do it? The party wants death to the traitors. But we're losing time because no one wants to take the responsibility of carrying justice out. I'm ready to write no on these sheets if the Secretary of Justice legitimizes my action. Secretary, Presenti has already refused. It's one in the morning. Only eight more hours till the execution. I come from the internal ministry. So then? Bufarini Guidi unloaded the responsibility of rejecting the request for pardon to the territorial command. And Consul Viannini called in sick. Enough with this hypocritical ballet. Viannini must reject the request. Go to his home, pull him out of his bed, and make him sign it. Come in. You sent for me, Duce? Yes. Gianna, it's almost dawn. Maybe the requests for pardon were accepted. Maybe we did it. Yes, maybe. His Excellency, the Perfect is here. Gianno Galeazzo, your request for pardon has been rejected. I'm sorry, Your Excellency. I was hoping. I'm sorry. Marinelli Giovanni, your request for pardon has been rejected. No! No! I am innocent! I am innocent! I don't want to die. I didn't know it! I couldn't hear. I am deaf. Don't make me die. I implore you, don't make me die! Don't kill me. My God, help me. He wants to cover his guilt with our death! He's a coward! May he burn in hell! Forgive him. You must forgive him, Galeazzo. No! Never! Never! We are about to appear before the court of God. We all need to be forgiven. Forgive him. Father, I want a confession. Here we are. The money. The pearl, too. The Swiss border is down there at the bottom. Give them to me, Ada. No. They will save Galeazzo's memory. It's the only thing I have left. <gasps> 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 
Promise me that you'll look out for yourself. Thank you, Emilio. Thank you. Think about your children now. Go. 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 Hurry. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. We all made a mistake. Tell my family that I'm dying without hatred for anyone. I beg you, give this letter to my wife. My adored Edda, my adored children. The pain of separating myself from you is too strong for me to find the words that I want to say in these extreme hours. You know how much I love you. Now it multiplies in the infinitive. It will remain with you from the afterlife of my earthly existence. And I will protect and console you. I did not tarnish my honor. You can always hold your head high in front of everyone with the name that I leave you, the justice of God and that of time can never deceive. They will help me, and they will help you. Edda, dearest, you are good, strong, and generous. I entrust you with our three babies. I am certain that you will guide them down the path of virtue. You must overcome these hours of anguish and be strong. In their name, for their future, what heaven has reserved for you is a hard trial. Keep the faith and think that if during this lifetime at times I needed to be far from you, now I will be with you, by your side, always. And you, adored children, be good. Love your mother and grandma Ina, who loves you very much. In you she will find comfort from her great sorrow and the lasting affection you have for each other in your studies in the love of the fatherland and faith in God. You must seek the reasons and support for your young lives. Your father blesses you with all his soul. Goodbye, dearest Etta. Goodbye, Cicino, Dindina, Mowgli. I hold you tightly against my heart with infinite tenderness, and I pray that God gives you all good things. He kisses you with much love, Yours forever, Papa. Papa won't be coming back. No! <laughs> this is Radio Free Milan speaking. 
We are interrupting this transmission to advise that at this moment, 9.15 of April 29, 1945, an enormous crowd is pushing towards Piazzella Loretta, where the bodies of Mussolini and his lover, Claretta Petacci, brought to justice yesterday, have been put on display. For the moment, we are unable to give you other information. One thing is certain. Benito Mussolini is dead. Galeazzo Ciano's diaries, Saved by Edda, were first published in America and then in Italy, and have become an important historic document. Italy's first democratic government after the liberation was created June 21, 1945, under the presidency of Ferruccio Pari. Three days after Mussolini's death, Adolf Hitler took his own life together with Eva Braun in the Chancellor's bunker in Soviet-occupied Berlin. Because of aiding Edda in her escape, Emilio Pucci was arrested and tortured by the Nazis. This didn't prevent him from later becoming the world-famous stylist. Lady Raquel lived for another 34 years, and she and her daughter reconciled. Edda Ciano Mussolini died in Rome on April 9, 1995.